we're obviously seeing, you know, the 10-year yield hit 4%, and now it's dropped pretty dramatically. They even closed pretty dramatically yesterday, down about 20 basis points lower than that 4% yield mark. What does that mean? What does that mean for the bond market, and what does that mean for the markets? So even before the, the price action we've seen with, you know, the, the aftermath of what's been going on in the U.K. markets, um, as the 10-year note was approaching 350 and then 370 and the long bond approaching 350, we were already thinking there was a good chance uh, the market would be seeing its high yields, not just for the medium-term period, but potentially for this whole cycle. Um, sentiment measures uh, were getting stretched, you know, deep into oversold territory for the bond market. Um, conditions that tend to line up with the reversal, we were just waiting for the price action to confirm that, either through significant deceleration and base building in the price action or a sharp reversal. Um, you're certainly caught by surprise by what's happened in the aftermath of what's been going on in the U.K., with just how high yields have gotten. But there are signs that we are seeing a bit of a blow off top in yields uh, develop, as you already mentioned, with the reversal from 4%. Still need to see further price action and bullish follow through to confirm that. Um, but th there are you know, signs of that in the price action. All right, so you're saying we're seeing what you call a blow off top. So I, I got to just ask you in plain language, I think everybody's trying to figure this out. And I know you don't have a crystal ball. There's certainly been a lot of surprises this year. But where do you see this yield going? Do you think it can top 4% this year? And where do you see the bottom? Um, yeah, so so the idea of a block top, you know, you know when, and you see reversals, there's like two types of reversals in, in the bond market, either a, a more orderly one where the trend decelerates prices base. And like I said, you get more of an orderly trend reversal, eventual breakout from the base pattern, or you get more of a panicky type move uh, where yields spike higher the way they've done over the past uh, several trading days. Um, and then you see one of those quintessential one day reversals um, where either on a news headline or no news at all. The market just sees the sharp intraday reversal and then closes dramatically at lower yields, which is basically what happened yesterday. Uh, you know what technicians would refer to as a, a bullish outside day when looking at the, the, the bar chart. Um, you know, so we see some elements of that. I think to really confirm the trend reversal, uh, the market would have to sustain closes uh, below 350 uh, in yields. And, you know, it sounds like it's far away, but it's just where it was trading a few trading days ago. Um, once you move back through that, you're back into the summertime trading range. Um, and I think anyone that got forced into positions or out of positions on the recent acceleration, um, certainly for anyone who's chased with shorts, would probably be forced to cover. And that might invigorate a, a bit more of a rally. Ultimately, the big resistance um, now is, is at 3%. You know, uh, speaking of resistance, higher in price, lower in yield. Um, you know, that 3% area is probably going to be a really tough hurdle over the medium term and through the fourth quarter for the, the bond market to reach in through. All right, I also want to talk to you about the broader market. What are the technical indicators saying about the broader market? We obviously broke through those June lows a couple days ago, but now we're back above it. What direction do the technicals tell us that the market's heading? Okay, so we know the seasonal period between September and the first one or two weeks of October generally is negative uh, for, for global risk markets, including the S&P 500. So, you know, if, if we look at average seasonality, that takes us to roughly October 11th before that turns the corner. Um, the trend clearly has been down into that period and accelerated, you know, not, not helped by the, the developments we've seen in the UK uh, recently. Um, the market's already oversold. That's important note. As we've retested the June low, you see sentiment, market internal and breadth indicators, some position metrics. If we look at futures positioning in the commitments of traders report, um, they're all at the extremes that are either match or in some cases even exceed what we saw in June. So the conditions are ripe. For a bullish reversal. And even if this is uh, a continued bear market that stretches into 2023, which isn't our, our house view at JP Morgan, but even if it is, those conditions generally lead to a multi week reflex or rebound um, in, in the market where you know, positions are forced to squeeze. So our general thinking is major supports in the 3,500 handles. Um, that also fits with, if you look at how the SP is related to the market's anticipation of terminal Fed pricing over the past year. Um, we have a cross-market model that looks at that. Um, if you were to stretch the S&P versus where terminal rates are now at roughly four and a half, that also fits with the idea of support in the 3500s. We think in a, let's call it worst case scenario, if the selling does accelerate for whatever reason, we think that the 3500s will hold it. The market will rebound, closes above 3900, confirm a reversal into the fourth quarter in our view. And the big resistance is now 4150 to 4200. We think that's going to be a significant hurdle. So again, even if this is a continued bear market, you should see some sort of a bear market rebound that, that takes you up 10 to 15% on the broad index.